All right, welcome to church this evening. We're glad that you're here tonight. The different elements that we're going to bring in of the family service is all of our songs are taken either from our camp songbook or children's songs. And so we're going to have a combination of that, which means um, you, some of us may be learning a new chorus this evening because this year our camp theme was the same as our church theme of stand firm, but we had a different thing. Uh, we had knights and we had um, war um, raiders and all sorts of things that, although does the same theme as what we have for church, I, just, I, mean, could, I mean, it looked nice, the service that we had, the knights and the raiders on the, on the piano, but it may look odd having that year round at church, right? But some of you are going, man, that'd be fun. Uh, okay, we'll remember that. So we learned a song called Stand Firm to go along with the camp theme, and so we'll teach it in a few moments. Uh, but let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer, and then we'll be started this evening. Father, we thank you so much for this time. Uh, you've given us to once again come together and to uh, worship you. We pray, Lord, that it be with the time of singing and uh, bless the time of preaching. Uh, be with Brother Hunter as he brings the word of God and help our hearts, Lord, to be prepared and, and ready to receive. Uh, but Lord, most of all, may you be honored and glorified through all that we do. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, so we're going to start out by singing, I Just Keep Trusting My Lord. I just keep trusting my Lord as I walk along. I just keep trusting my Lord and He gives a song. Though the storm clouds darken the sky or the heavenly trail, I just keep trusting my Lord, He will never fail. He's a faithful friend, such a faithful friend. I can count on Him to the very end. Though the storm clouds darken the sky, or the heavenly trail. I just keep trusting my Lord, He will never fail. Everyone sung that before? Know that song? All right, good. All right, now we're going to sing the new song uh, that we prop. Some of you may have heard, you may not have heard. So if you're at camp this year, uh, please sing out with us. We'll sing it through the first time. And then hopefully everyone catches on by the time we sing it the second time. All right? Stand strong, stand firm. Represent the cross to all the world. Don't bend, don't break. Stand for truth and choose who stands to stay. God will never let you stand alone. Stand strong. How many of you, that's the first time you've heard that? A few of you? Uh, it's the chorus to a song. There's verses to it. Um, but we just sing the chorus. I think Tommy's heard that one. I heard... I heard Tom sing along with me above everybody else. That's awesome. And so now if everyone else sings out as enthusiastic as Tom, we'll be doing good on the second time. Ready? Stand strong, stand firm. Represent the cross to all the world. Don't bend, don't break. Stand for truth and choose to stay to stay. God will never let you stand alone, so stand strong. All right. 
right, as you think about that, it's a challenge uh, for us as believers to stand for what's right, right? Stand for the cross and represent the cross. And you think of that phrase, the first time I heard the chorus, I thought, I don't know if I agree with that. God will never let you stand alone. But then I thought, even if you're alone, he's with you, right? Because the Holy Spirit indwells you. So you're not alone. And so that's a that's good reminder. Now, uh, before we have the... Um, memory verse for the evening we're going to sing this is the day this is the day this is the day that the Lord has made that the Lord hath made I will rejoice, I will rejoice, and be glad in it, and be glad in it. For this is the day that the Lord hath made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Well, good evening, everyone, and it's once again time for memory verse. So let's get right into it. So there it is, Romans chapter 5, verse 2. I'll say it, then you say it. Romans chapter 5, verse 2. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And again. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Amen. May the Lord add his blessing to that. Now we're going to go into some children's type songs. So sing along with us if you know these. We're going to sing Jesus Loves Even Me. And it has three verses, so we'll sing all three verses. I am so glad that my Father in heaven tells of his love in the book he has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see. This is the dearest that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Though I forget him and wander away, still he doth love me wherever I stray. Back to his dear loving arms would I flee when I remember that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me, Jesus loves even me. Oh, if there's only one song I can sing, when in his beauty I see the great King, this shall my song in eternity be. Oh, what a wonder that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me, I am so glad that Jesus loves me, Jesus loves even me. Continuing with that theme, we're going to sing Jesus Loves Me, but it's not the one you're normally used to maybe. Uh, this is a little bit of a different song, and it's also a song that can be sung in a round. And uh, so we're not going to divide it up into five different rounds. Uh, but what we might do in a moment, we'll sing it through one time, and then we'll divide it up. The right side of the church is round one. The left side of the church is round two. And then you just have to echo what they sing. It, that, that, that's it. And then you end, and then you keep singing the last phrase to the end. And that, there we go. We got it around? All right. Jesus loves me, this I know, 
For the Bible tells me so. He shed his blood on the cross of Calvary. He shed his blood on the cross of Calvary. There he saved his life for me. Simple, right? Yes? We got it? So, we're going to start, and this side is going to sing, Jesus loves me, this I know. When they get to four, this side will start, Jesus loves me, this I know. Yes? We, we got that? So, you guys don't have to worry about anything. Just sing normal. You guys have to just delay a little bit and echo them. Ready? Jesus loves me, this I know. Keep singing. Oh, tells me so. He shed his blood on the cross of Calvary. He shed his blood on the cross of Calvary. There he shed his life for me. He got it the first try. Maybe we should have done five parts. No. Um, all right. The last song before the message is going to be a song that's familiar. Parents have probably told this to your children a hundred times, a thousand times, probably even a million times, depending on how many children you have. And if you're able to, before the message, let's just all stand and we'll sing uh, both verses to Obedience Is. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Doing exactly what the Lord commands, doing it happily. Action is the key, do it immediately, joy you will receive. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. O-B-E-G-I-E-N-C-E -E. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. We want to live pure, we want to live clean, we want to do our best. Sweetly submitting to authority, giving to God the rest. Walking in the light, keeping our attitude right on the narrow way. For if we believe the word we receive, we always will obey. best way to show that you believe. All right, good singing. You may be seated this evening. And sometimes we th sing these songs that we deem children's songs. But if you think about them, there's a lot of truth in them, isn't there? And matter of fact, it's just reiterating what we've been studying in adult and teen growth group, that if we, if we believe the Word of God, then we should obey the Word of God. And what's the greatest way to show that you believe? Actually doing what you learn. All right. Now, uh, this evening, <clears throat> I've asked, um, it's been a privilege to have the hunters with us uh, while they've been in, in the area and been in town, and we've enjoyed getting to know them and having a good time of fellowship. And I've asked Brother Bob Hunter if he, I said to him, do you, do you at all preach or teach or were you willing to do that? And he said, yes, I do that at, at my home church. So I said, why don't you do it here? And so I've invited him to bring the message this evening. So we look forward to uh, having open Bibles and open hearts and ears, right? And taking in the Word of God and applying it to our lives. So, brother?
Hopefully that's on. We good, Pete? Okay. All right. Well, thank you for uh, allowing us to worship with you all while we've been in the, the Brisbane area. And it's a, it's a pleasure to travel halfway around the world and be able to meet with a group of people of life, like faith and practice. And it's an encouragement to, to us to see your church still thriving after 10 years. And uh, we're thankful for you and for the opportunity that we have to be here. It's also convenient to where we're staying in Clontarf, so that's a blessing as well. And it's, it's a nice to be able to worship with you all. Um, the, uh, before we go to the message this evening, though, let's uh, open with a word of prayer. Uh, I, I do teach some at our, home, at our home church. I teach a Sunday school class normally. I'm not a preacher, although I do occasionally speak like this, so uh, <clears throat> uh, don't get your expectations too high. <laughs> anyway, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you for the health and strength that you've given us to be here. And Lord, we pray for those that aren't able to be here this evening, that you would raise them up in your time. Lord, I pray that you would speak to our hearts as we open your word. I pray that you would help us to be receptive to the truth you have for us. And Lord, I pray that you would uh, work in my life uh, as well. In your name we pray. Amen. The, normally I preach from paper notes, but I didn't have an opportunity to print this out, so I'm going to use my computer tonight. Hopefully that's not too much of a distraction. Uh, take your Bibles, if you would, and turn to Psalm 100. Psalm 100. This is a very familiar psalm. Um, as, a, as a child, I think I memorized it. Uh, we homeschooled our children, or maybe I should say Sharon did 99% of that. And each year during uh, the school year, depending on their grade level, they would have a certain number of scripture verses that they were to memorize. And Psalm 100 was one of the ones that that uh, they had to learn over the years. And so it's a very familiar psalm, short psalm. Um, but there's a particular section of this that I want us to look at tonight. Uh, but we'll start by reading it uh, in total, all five verses. Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Well, we've certainly uh, been scriptural tonight in that we made a joyful noise to the Lord in the first part of our service. And um, we've come before his presence with singing, so we're doing okay so far. So now we're going to uh, see what the Lord has for us from this psalm. Uh, as a, as a uh, familiar, let me find my mouse here, turn this on. Sorry about that. As a familiar passage, often we kind of gloss over things, and we don't pay much attention to the words, uh, a bit like the words in our hymns. Sometimes we just sing them, rote memory, and we don't uh, contemplate what they really mean to us. And I'll admit Psalm 100 is kind of in that category for me because it's, it's a familiar psalm, a bit like Psalm 23, and you can just quote it and you don't think too much about it. But there was a particular phrase in verse 3 that stood out to me uh, recently, and it's the, the one, it is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. And that struck me. I thought, why did they include that phrase? It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. What's the point the psalmist is trying to make with that phrase? And I thought, well, I was made by my parents. Can you be your own parents? How could, uh, you know, what's, what's, what's the thought here that I'm missing? Um, and I thought, you can't be your own parents. And then I remembered that song. You may have heard it, uh, remember it from years ago. Ray Stevens wrote a song, I'm My Own Grandpa. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard that one before. But um, anyway, he, through this series of complex family relationships where his, uh, his mom died and his dad remarried someone younger and she had kids. Anyway, all this stuff, for, he, he figured out he was his own grandpa and that's what the song's about. But I don't think that's what verse 3 here is, is trying to say. 
uh, is that uh, uh, it's he that made us and not we ourselves. So again, what's the point that the psalmist is trying to make here? And you would think that this would be obvious we didn't make ourselves. But I think what the psalmist is wanting us to focus on is God is the origin of our life. And he used our physical parents, but God grants the life that each of us have. And whatever we are and whatever we do, whatever we accomplish in life, whatever we become, it's God the one who should be credited. That is, we're not self-made. You've probably heard the, someone say, well, I'm a self-made man. I pull myself up by my own bootstraps, etc." cetera. Uh, this verse is saying that's not really true. It's not true at all, in fact. Uh, it's he that hath made us and not we ourselves. So I want to think a little bit about that this evening. Um, and why do we sometimes feel like we have made ourselves? You know, what makes us feel that way? I thought of some different things in life that can give us that, that sense that we've made ourselves. It's, it's pride, really. Um, when you've made some accomplishment in life, do you feel proud of what you've achieved? Which is a natural reaction often. I thought of you know, a dozen different examples here. Maybe you got a good test score on an exam. Or maybe you got a promotion at work. Uh, maybe your child finally graduates from home school. Uh, completion of a major project. Perhaps you graduated yourself from high school or college. Maybe you've saved up some money and finally bought the thing that you wanted, whether it was a car or a house or a new gadget or whatever. Perhaps you solved a difficult problem at home or at work. You finally trained a child to adopt the right behavior. Uh, perhaps you forged a friendship with a special person or you've landed a new job making more money. Whatever the accomplishment is, uh, those bring a feeling, of, a feeling of, of accomplishment and satisfaction. But do you feel like you reached that milestone because of your own strength or your own intelligence and wisdom and perseverance, persistence, charm, whatever the characteristic might be that would have led to that? Uh, if we do, if we feel that way, then we've got this self-made feeling. And God's warning us, uh, in Psalm 100, verse 3, he reminds us we're not self-made, we're God-made. Um, James 1.17 is, is another familiar verse. If you turn there, if you would. James 1.17. Find it myself here. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. I love the, the, the image there. God doesn't change. He doesn't turn. There's not even a shadow, not even a hint of it in him. But the first part is what I want to focus on. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And so this verse reminds us that anything good in our lives, in fact, everything good in our lives, is from God. So if you've got something good in your life, whether that's an advancement, an achievement, a promotion, a recognition, an ability, a possession, a talent, a powerful influence, a person, a position, a talent, whatever it is, it's from God's good hand. Because James says every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And if those things are a gift to us, then we really don't have a basis for self-made pride, do we? Because it was given to us. Um, you know, one area where we feel tempted to feel, when we are tempted to feel self-made, is the things that we have. That is our possessions, our money, the things that we're blessed with. And you know, we do live in an affluent culture. We live in a, in a first world country. Uh, we have first world problems, but uh, there, we, there's a lot of things we don't struggle with because we live in a first world country. Um, and I thought of 1 Timothy 6.17, where it says, Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Again, the idea is God giveth us richly all things to enjoy. And the, in particular, it's talking about those that are blessed uh, financially and physically in the world. We shouldn't be high-minded, think that we're better than anyone else. Uh, or even trust in those riches, 
but they remember that they come from God who gave them to us richly for our enjoyment. And so this verse clearly says that our riches, our possessions are given to us by God. And um, in fact, all the things we enjoy are gifts from God. So rather than feeling proud or fortunate or glad that we were in the right place at the right time and, you know, uh, bought that lottery ticket or whatever. <laughs> no, I hope you didn't buy lottery tickets. Uh, rather than feeling that we had the right connections or whatever it was, we should recognize that our possessions and the things that we enjoy are gifts from God also. And like I said a minute ago, if, if then they are gifts to us, how can we be proud as if somehow we earned them? So that's one area that we're tempted to feel self-made is in the possessions uh, that we have, uh, their money, our wealth, etc. Another area where we're tempted to feel self-made is in our mental or intellectual abilities. Um, and I thought of Proverbs 2, verse 6. For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. The Lord giveth wisdom. Notice that now you've I've probably heard... Uh, someone speak on the difference between knowledge and understanding and wisdom. This verse mentions all three of those. The Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. So that's a pretty broad scope of intellectual capability. Um, and it's saying that that comes from God himself. Uh, you know, we may be tempted to feel proud of our, our intellectual achievements or the things we figured out by logical reasoning or the problems we've solved. And I know this is an area where I'm tempted to be proud myself. Uh, as, a, as an engineer, we're, tr we're trained to figure things out and solve things, right? And so for many years in industry, uh, uh, I was a, uh, well, an engineer and also ran the, uh, the engineering department for many years as well. And so when things went wrong, you would go to the engineers because they're the ones that could figure it out. And so th that can build a sense of pride in you. Well, we're the ones that solve all the world's problems, you know. And so I know that I'm tempted to feel proud in this area as well. But this verse reminds me, the Lord giveth that wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Uh, I can remember when I was in college and I was struggling with calculus. I would pray because I and say, Lord, you understand calculus. Help me figure this out because I really need your help now. Um, and uh, just because God wrote a Bible for us that's, uh, that, that's an old book doesn't mean that God doesn't know calculus. And certainly he can give that wisdom and understanding. Um, I remember once when I had the, succeeded in getting uh, an air conditioner to work in an old car that we had. And I was feeling quite proud of myself that I that I'd got it, was able to fix it and get it going because we didn't have any money to fix it. And I thought, well... You know, I got it working, so I was feeling, feeling pretty good about myself. Um, and I didn't know anything about auto air conditioners, and like I say, we didn't have any money to fix it. So I bought a book about it, and I, I read the book and studied it up. I diagnosed the problem and was able to get it working for a small amount of money, just a few parts here and there. And this made me feel proud of myself for having fixed it. However, I really shouldn't have been proud at all, because you see, there was a man who wrote the book, and he was much smarter than I, and I was just benefiting from his knowledge. And there was a teacher that taught me how to read, and without that, I wouldn't have been able to even read the book. And it was God who gave me the ability to reason and logic and to figure things out. And so I was really just benefiting from others who had invested in me, and I was reaping the results of that investment. And when I look at it that way, it was expected of me that I should use the things that God had given me, the talents, the abilities, the resources, to solve the problem that I had at hand. And so rather than feeling proud of what my accomplishment was, I should have recognized that others had invested in me one way, indirectly or directly, and that enabled me to solve the problem I had with the air conditioner. Um, but that's not, not always easy to do. That's not the first fight, thought that pops into your mind, is it? But uh, back to the... The verse there in Psalm, it's he that hath made us and not we ourselves. You know, Solomon, who's known for his wisdom, and the same Solomon that wrote the book of Proverbs, the, that said, the Lord giveth wisdom, and out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Um, 
Let's scroll my mouse here. He wanted wisdom to lead the nation of Israel. Uh, remember, he said that he felt like he was a child and he didn't know how to go in or come out. And he asked God for wisdom and God granted it to him. God was pleased with his request and said he would give him wisdom and blessed him in other ways as well. 1 Kings 4, 29 and 30 says, And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much and largeness of heart, even as the sand that is on the seashore. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country and all the wisdom of Egypt. And the scriptures tell us that he was the wisest man that lived besides our Lord. I can remember as a child, I was very impressed by the story of Solomon and, and that he asked God for wisdom and God was pleased with that request and God granted his request. And so I decided I would pray for wisdom too. So for, I did that for many years. I would pray, Lord, give me wisdom. And it was a rote prayer out of many days, I'm sure. But um, uh, many days, I'm sure I prayed that earnestly. So then if I, by wisdom, make an advancement, realize an achievement, I need to remind myself, you know, you asked God for that wisdom and he gave it to you. And it's, it's not my own doing, but it's wisdom given by God to me for use in life. And so similarly, if you feel your intellectual abilities have, have allowed you to make some achievement or reach some milestone, don't forget the source of that wisdom and give God the credit for what he has enabled you to do. Now, um, I don't know if you're still there in Psalm or if you turned uh, to James, but the, first, the fourth verse in Psalm 100 says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts be, with praise. Be thankful unto him. And bless his name. You know, so verse 4 there talks about Thanksgiving. And in the United States, we have a Thanksgiving holiday in, uh, in November. And it's a time when we were reminded to give thanks to God for who he does and what he does for us. And um, we are, I think it's a good idea to have that holiday because otherwise, well, uh, I don't know that we would set aside a time each year when we, when we give uh, thanks to God and to others uh, for their goodness to us. But at that time of year, we're reminded and challenged to be thankful for the many things that we enjoy and all the blessings we have in life. James tells us that all those good things, anything good, everything good is from God and we direct our gratefulness to him. But also be thankful for many others who have invested in you in some way. Um, as an engineering manager at work, I, had, I would have staff meetings every week. And around Thanksgiving at, uh, each year, uh, one or at least once, I would, um, once each year, I would challenge the folks that work for me in this area of Thanksgiving. Because as I said, you know, Engineers are, tend to be a proud lot uh, because we were the problem solvers, the go-to people when things went wrong. And <clears throat> I would challenge them, be thankful for the, the, the people in your life that you've benefited from, the others that have invested in you, uh, and, uh, and sh express your appreciation to them, those you still have contact with. It could be a parent, it could be a teacher, a mentor, maybe a neighbor, a friend, or a pastor, a Sunday school teacher. Uh, maybe a spouse, a sibling, a relative, a co-worker, a neighbor, a boss, whatever it is. There's many others that have crossed your paths over the years, and they've invested in you a little or a lot, and you've benefited from that. Realize that they've all contributed to making, what you, to making you what you are. You're not self-made. You're made by God through those other people. Sometimes we get this narrow view of what, how God works. And he works directly with us when we read his word. He speaks to our heart when we hear a message. He speaks to our heart, etc. But he also works indirectly through the circle of people that he's placed in your life. Uh, your parents weren't given to you by accident. Your neighbor wasn't given to you by accident. Um, God works in and through them. It, what, the, the very familiar verse, Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good to them that love God. That's all. That doesn't mean just a few things. That means even your neighbor. Even uh, uh, we, we, we think, we've been thinking tonight about good things, and certainly all those good things are for our good as well, but 
Uh, don't lose sight of the fact that even the difficult things in life, God places in your life for good. Uh, and that could be, um, that could be a, a cranky neighbor or a difficult co-worker. Uh, I know that was the case for me a couple years before I retired. I was really struggling with, with someone at work that, uh, let's just say, they didn't have the same ethics that I did. And uh, I was fortunate to have a boss who was a Christian. And he was sharing to me with me one day a sermon that his uh, pastor had uh, preached. And that was a challenge to me to see this difficult person at work as someone that God was trying to use in my life. God wanted to change something in me, and he was using this other person as a catalyst for that. And I wasn't reacting the right way, uh, and he wanted me to. Uh, so God works through those things as well for our good. So, but uh, we're not necessarily focusing on, the, on those difficult influences, but be thankful for all those that have helped you along the way and have invested in you in some way and have helped to make you what you are and have helped you accomplish what you've accomplished. Um, you know, at Christmas time, we give gifts to one another and we remember God's gift of his son to the world as a baby born in Bethlehem. And that's a, a fun time of year when we celebrate that. You know, this gift was necessary because... God's plan for his son Jesus was for, to him, uh, was for him to live a perfect life as a perfect sinless man and then die on the cross as the perfect payment for the sin debt of the world. After three days, he rose from the dead, proving that he was victorious over death and hell and the grave and sin, and also that he has the power to give eternal life to those that believe on him and trust him as Savior. If you've never trusted him as your savior, then you need to do that before it's eternally too late. But at Christmas, we, rec we remember that great gift of God's uh, son to us. But besides this wondrous gift from God to the world, remember that it is God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. You know, God just didn't make a way of salvation for us, which is a wonderful thing. He giveth us all things richly to enjoy. So we aren't self-made such that we've earned or deserve the things given to us or the things that we have. Remember, James says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. So next time you're tempted to be proud of yourself and your achievements or your accomplishments, think of that phrase in Psalm 100, verse 3. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. That was the main thought that I wanted to leave with us tonight. But a follow-on thought that I'll leave with you as we close is that the things God blesses us with are certainly for our benefit, right? That's scriptural. It says they're given to us by God to enjoy. But they're not just for our benefit. They're not just for our own selfish enjoyment. God has a purpose in that as well. And the things that God blesses us with also have a purpose for God's glory to advance his kingdom, to further his will, etc. Now fill in the blank. God's doing something with the blessings that he's giving you. He didn't just give them to you so you could uh, have a good time. There's a reason that God has blessed you the way he has. And you can probably think of several illustrations of this in scripture. We won't head down that uh, uh, detour this evening. Uh, so if you don't know why you are blessed the way that you are, ask God to show you how you should be using what he's given you. There's uh, passages in the New Testament that talk about talents and gifts. God's given some to you. Do you know what they are? And are you using them to benefit uh, his kingdom and for his glory? So we aren't self-made. It's he that's made us, not we ourselves. And he's made us the way we are for a particular purpose. So let's uh, close in a word of prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you for the many blessings which we enjoy at your good hand. Thank you that you uh, haven't just left us alone, but you, you care for us. You give us all things uh, to enjoy. And thank you that we can trust you and know that you work in and through us and in situations of life for our good and for your glory. Lord, help us to see you in our lives in the way that you mold us through the people around us, through the circumstances you send our way, 
and the, and the blessings that you give us. Help us to respond in a right way and to uh, further your kingdom through the things that you do in and through us. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you for that. It's always a good reminder um, to remember where things come from and why, why we have them is to use them for the glory of God. My father-in-law would always say, be a channel. That's the phrase he would use. Uh, he would always say, if God's giving you something, he's giving it to you because someone else needs something. At our church, we've always had a phrase is, our excess is someone else's need, right? And so whenever that happens, use what God gives you for the glory of God. Now, a good reminder that it's not us is our closing song. All right, didn't even, didn't even know, but the good reminder is leaning on the everlasting arms I remind you of who's hold, actually holding us up and the fellowship that we have in Christ. So let's sing the first, uh, let's just sing all three verses. What a joy divine leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning. On the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet the walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all of arms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so dear, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. All right, thank you for coming out this evening. Thank you for the challenge from the Word of God. And um, just be encouraged that, you know what? You can learn from the Bible. The Bible can be taught and preached, right? Some of you are looking at me going, ah. Some of you are afraid to say agree with that statement because you know where I'm going with that, don't you? Yeah, that means you can join those who actually teach and preach the Bible. Every, everyone can do it. And uh, you say, but I'm not called to be a pastor. That's okay. He said he wasn't either. But he still teaches the Bible, right? Some of you are looking at me like I'm being very quiet. I'm being very careful with how I agree with you. Um, but anyway, it's just, just be a good reminder. Uh, this week, 7 o'clock, we have our Wednesday night prayer meeting and Bible study still on, on via Zoom. So if you need that link, let me know. We'll get that to you. And uh, do be in prayer for a number of people who have friends and family or relatives that are going through difficult things. Um, be in prayer for that and be in prayer for the men's camp that's coming up um, to, in a, two weeks, I think. Two weeks from today, tomorrow, we'll be getting ready to, some of us will be getting ready to go off and then some will join us on Monday and some will join us on Wednesday and some will join us on, on Thursday. And throughout the week, we'll just have a revolving time of people coming to camp and going and it'll be a great time of fellowship and be prepared uh, for that and we look forward to that. And then, uh, there are available um, some um, f 
flyers to be able to letterbox areas. And so if you go out for a normal walk and you want to be able to, you know, letterbox while you walk and, you know, you can do that. You, you're welcome to uh, take some and letterbox wherever you are and, and wherever you're walking to do that. If you would like a map, please see me. I'd be happy to give you a map and a stack of um, the gospel uh, invitations to church to be able to get out and about in the community and be inviting uh, people to church and being a witness um, for that. Let's close the service in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you so much for this evening. We thank you for the opportunity we have to once again be in your house. We thank you for the reminder from your word once again. And Lord, we uh, thank you for the way that you have put people in our lives to invest in us, to, to encourage us, to give us the ability and the skills to uh, be able to serve you and to learn and Lord, I pray that we'd use those to bring honor and glory to you, to encourage uh, ourselves in the Lord, but Lord, also to encourage those around us and point them to you. And may you be with us and give us a safe week. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.